Meanwhile, Moody's downgraded South Africa's sovereign credit ratings to junk status on Friday, keeping more pain on an economy already in recession and now stirring down the barrel of a steep contraction over the global coronavirus pandemic. Aside from that, S&P Global downgraded Nigeria's long-term issuers rating to B-, minus, while Fitch ratings downgraded Nigerian banks. What is the implications of these for Africa's largest markets? I'm being joined by the practice lead, sub Saharan Africa at Docker Frontier London, William Atwell. Hello, William. Good afternoon. Yeah. I hope you're keeping safe from COVID-19. At home, uh, working from home, like a lot of Londoners right now, but glad to be able to join you online. Mm, I can see. Anyway, the past few days have uh, been very busy from the perspective of sovereign ratings decisions. What will the economic impact be for the region's largest markets, talking about South Africa and Nigeria? Mm. So the South Africa decision from Moody's was really long expected, just given how the fiscal metrics for the government were trending. Uh, there have been a number of problems that have been building up over the past uh, several years, really. Um, and of course, Moody's was looking at how uh, government revenues, uh, government uh, tax revenues, but also the debt buildup has really been um, uh, growing over the past several years. So not very surprising that Moody's downgrade, but of course, just as to the pile of uh, challenges facing that particular market, and of course, exacerbated the uh, fluctuations we're seeing in the value of the RAND, so the South African currency really uh, uh, deteriorating, uh, depreciating um, to historic lows of the past uh, 24 hours, actually. Um, so when it comes to the other credit rating decisions, uh, of course, Nigeria, along with a number of other oil producing nations, um, Angola, but also markets elsewhere too, Mexico, Ecuador, for instance, are being downgraded as part of that um, shift. And really, credit rating agencies were looking at how government revenues are really liking, likely to be affected by uh, the crash in the oil price that we're seeing right now, and how that affects their um, stability in terms of their ability to pay their, their sovereign debt. So when we look ahead, of course, the big implications for these markets is going to be much more difficult and much more expensive for uh, governments to, to borrow. And that includes, of course, um, the Nigerian uh, federal authorities. Now, we've, we've seen dire warnings from the IMF that the global economy may already be in recession. What are your views and how do you expect growth to pan out in the rest of the year? So the global story, of course, is not looking good for 2020. We're expecting uh, recession conditions in many key Western European markets, uh, in the US as well. And uh, compared to our previous forecast for China, if you asked us at the, uh, late last year, um, you know, cut the China outlook by more than half. We're not expecting a recession in China. Already economic activity starting to ramp up, and we expect that to continue later into the year. Um, but in terms of growth for the global economy overall, very flat indeed, with, with very little um, uptick at all. Now, in sub-Saharan Africa, which currencies are most at risk? So it, it really uh, depends. Uh, uh, of course, there are those markets that are very highly traded. So the South African rand that I mentioned earlier, uh, we're expecting very significant swings, both towards depreciation, uh, but then you know some appreciation thereafter. We've already in the last couple of hours seen the rand regain um, some traction, uh, but of course the sh Kenyan shilling has weakened quite a bit, the Ugandan shilling. Um, then of course the currencies with the oil producing markets like Nigeria, like Angola, of course, under a lot of pressure um, given the weaker exports, but also um, the severe foreign exchange and foreign reserve shortages. So those are important markets and important currencies to watch as well. All right. Thank you very much uh, for your time, William. And please continue to stay safe. William Artwell is a practice lead sub-Saharan Africa at Docker Frontier.